Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you. Welcome to the Cream Center for Mindful Living. Welcome back to those of you who are a regular part of our mindfulness community and our meditation group here. And I'd also like to offer a nice warm welcome to those of you who are new and who are joining us for the very first time. So just a little bit about us. We are a global nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the benefits of mindfulness, self-compassion, and positive psychology accessible to all. Our goal is to help people become more resilient and to live better lives through our various programs. We offer affordable pricing and scholarships as well as these free weekly meditations. And so our theme for the month uh, for the months of May and June is learning to love ourselves. And this week's particular theme is discovering our compassionate voice. I like this theme quite a bit. And I'd like to begin with a quote, um, which is everything you need, your courage, strength, compassion, and love, everything you need is already within you. And I think this quote sets the stage beautifully for what we're going to be talking about and exploring today. And so today we will be discussing our inner compassionate voice. However, before we do this, we must first talk about our inner critic. So although we would love to talk to ourselves in a kind and compassionate way, many of us have this inner critical voice, something that we call the inner critic. And reflecting on your own inner critic, you may see, see this internal voice as a source of pain. Most of us do wish that we could get rid of our inner critics. I do want to mention, while although there is certainly a healthier and more productive way of speaking with ourselves, the inner critic does in fact serve a purpose. Our inner critic, this inner critical voice that we have, is there to try and keep us safe in some way. So this inner critic tries to protect us from a perceived danger, even if its methods are unproductive. The good news is, though, that just as many of us have this inner critical voice, we also have an inner compassionate voice. There is a self-compassionate part of us that also wants to keep us safe from harm. And this inner self-compassionate part of us wants what is best for us. And we can take the time to find and explore this inner compassionate part of ourselves. And then we can nurture this voice. And doing so has tremendous benefits. So research has shown that cultivating a more inner compassionate dialogue allows us to become more self-compassionate. This in turn then allows us to motivate ourselves with greater kindness and less self-criticism or judgment. It also strengthens this yang-like action element of self-compassion, which then allows us to make healthy changes in our lives. It allows us to stand up for ourselves and also to set boundaries when necessary. So today we're going to take some time exploring both of these voices that lie within us. And so I would like to invite you to find yourself a comfortable seat, whatever that might mean for you in this moment, whether that's sitting or lying down, perhaps it's even finding a blanket or something to keep you comfortable and warm. And then there's an invitation to close the eyes or soften the gaze. Right, so we're just going to take a moment to settle in and bring the attention inward. Right, bringing an inward gaze now. And then gently resting the awareness on the breath in the body. And just following the natural rhythm of the breath. So there's no need to change or manipulate the breath in any way. 
just seeing if it's possible to rest the awareness on the natural rhythm of the breath in the body. And just following each breath cycle. This natural ebb and flow of the breath. Just continuing to ride the waves of the breath. And now, please call to mind a behavior that you would like to change. Something that you often beat yourself up about. A behavior that you typically try to change through self-criticism. Also, please choose a behavior that's actually causing some difficulty in your life, but only selecting a behavior that's mildly to moderately problematic. So not one that's extremely harmful. And I'd also like you to call to mind a behavior that's potentially changeable, right? So not choosing a permanent characteristic of ourselves, like my feet are too big, right? So perhaps choosing something like I eat too much junk food. I don't exercise enough. I don't meditate enough. I procrastinate. I'm too impatient or I'm too accommodating. So just taking some mind to call such a behavior to mind. And once you have settled on a behavior, taking some time to really reflect on the problems that this behavior is causing. What problems does this behavior cause? And now reflecting on how you typically react to yourself when you find yourself doing this behavior, right? How do you react when you find yourself doing this behavior? And 
And so asking yourself now, how does my inner critic express itself? So are there unkind words used? Perhaps there's this harsh tone of voice, right? Sometimes it's all in the tone of voice. And other times, maybe there's no words at all, but rather this sense of coldness or disappointment when you find yourself behaving this way. Right? Maybe it's a physical posture or image that comes to mind. Maybe it's a felt sense in the body, right? something somatic that we feel. So just taking some time to sit with and reflect on how this critical attitude expresses itself for you. How it shows up. And now switching perspectives a little bit and taking a moment to get in touch with the part of you that feels criticized. All right, so getting in touch with that part of you that feels criticized. And noticing how it feels to get in touch with this part of you. And if you wish, perhaps giving yourself some compassion for how challenging it is to be the recipient of such harsh treatment. Maybe taking a sympathetic moment for yourself. Perhaps validating yourself, this is hard or this hurts. It's just being with that part of yourself that feels criticized. And now I'd like to invite you to turn toward your inner critic with a sense of interest and curiosity, right? So seeing if we can bring this exploratory lens, right? Viewing it with a sense of openness and begin to reflect for a moment on why the criticism has gone on for so long. And why has this inner critic been there for so long in your life? Is the inner critic trying to protect you in some way? Is it trying to keep you safe from danger or help you even if the result has been unproductive? So just taking some time to sit with this, see what bubbles up to the surface.
And if you can't find any way that your inner critic is trying to help you, you know, sometimes self-criticism has no redeeming value whatsoever. And if this is the case, you know, please just continue to give yourself compassion for how you've struggled with self-criticism in the past. But if you do identify some way that your inner critic might be trying to keep you safe, see if it's possible to acknowledge its efforts. Maybe let your inner critic know that even though it may not be serving you very well now, it had good intentions. It was doing its best. It was trying to help you. You may even wish to offer your inner critic a few words of thanks. Thanks for trying to keep me safe. Thank you for trying to protect me. And so now that this self-critical voice has been heard, we're going to switch gears and we're going to connect with our inner compassionate voice. And before we do this, I'd like to invite you to just take a nice full breath in. So inhaling fully and then exhaling completely, letting it all go. And so now making some space for this other voice, your inner compassionate voice, this aspect of yourself that loves you and accepts you unconditionally, just as you are. This voice is also wise. This voice is clear-sighted. And this voice recognizes how the behavior you criticize yourself for is creating problems in your life. It's causing difficulty. And your inner compassionate voice also wants you to change but it wants you to change for very different reasons. And so if you'd like, there's an invitation to place a hand over the heart, maybe two hands over the heart or any other soothing and supportive place on the body. Just taking a moment to feel the warmth the contact, you supporting you. And now allow the compassionate side of yourself to emerge. Perhaps it emerges as an image. Maybe it's a posture. Maybe it's a warm feeling. And now reflect again on the behavior that you're struggling with. And calling it to mind once more. This behavior we identified earlier in the meditation. And know that your inner compassionate self would like you to try and make a change. 
not because you are unacceptable as you are, but because it wants the very best for you. And with this in mind, see if this inner compassionate voice emerges. What would it say to you in this moment? Maybe it's, I love you and I don't want you to struggle. Or I care deeply about you and that's why I'd like to help you make a change. Or I don't want you to keep harming yourself and I am here. I am here to support you. And so seeing what emerges seeing what this inner compassionate voice has to say. And if you're struggling to find the words, perhaps bringing the image of a person who cares so deeply about you to mind, or maybe someone who means a lot to you. And imagine what this person might say to you right now. And what emerges from this deep feeling and wish that's, I love you and don't want you to struggle? What words do you need to hear to make a change? And just know that if you're having difficulty finding these compassionate words, that that's okay, that this takes time, right? The important thing is that we set our intention to try to be kinder to ourselves. And eventually the words will come and new habits will form. So just continuing to listen to this compassionate voice. If you are able to connect with it. And then gently letting this voice fade into the background, coming home to the breath in the body. The Journey by Mary Oliver. One day you finally knew what you had to do and began. Though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice, 
though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles, mend my life, each voice cried. But you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do. Though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations, though their melancholy was terrible, it was already late enough and a wild night and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the, through the sheet of clouds. And there was a new voice, which you slowly recognized as your own, that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. And just letting those words wash over you if they resonate. And when you're ready, just beginning to wiggle your fingers and toes, bringing some gentle movements back into your body. And then opening your eyes whenever you're ready. Maybe taking a moment to reorient your space. taking a moment to regroup. And I would like to leave you with a weekly invitation as we always do. And this week, I'd like to invite you to continue exploring your inner compassionate voice, right? This part of you that loves you and cares so deeply for you. And so in order to do this, you might try writing yourself a letter from your compassionate voice, right? Sometimes free writing this way helps us to find our inner compassionate voice. And if you do choose to do this this week, I'd like to also invite you to then take the time to read the words back to yourself, right? These compassionate words that flowed from your own heart and your own hand. I'd like to wish you all a wonderful and compassionate week ahead. Be well, everyone. Take good care. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye, everyone.